As artists and creatives, we likely have an overabundance of projects and tasks that we wish to get done. But not all of us have the time or focus to get said things done. I know I personally fluctuate between times of intense productivity and times of no productivity. Sometimes life gets in the way and sometimes I get in the way of myself. But when it is time to get things done, I manage to do it in the most spectacular fashion. So in this video, I'm going to give you five tips that have helped me to be productive more often and for longer periods of time. But before that, I would just like to say, welcome to Edenwick, a place where I share my dangerous creative journey so that myself and others can learn from it. If you like art, writing, and videos related to them, then don't be afraid to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. Now, on to the video. Tip number one, set goals, real ones. Draw more is not a goal, get good is not a goal. These are desires without end. The primary reason for lack of productivity is aimlessness. You sit down and you don't know what to do, so you do a bunch of nothing, or just go into autopilot, surfing the web and getting sucked into the endless scrolling abyss. With a goal, you'll sit down with a purpose and will have something to work towards. Now, there are levels to creative goal setting. If you're an artist, you first need to think about why you make art and what you want to do with it. Then set goals around that. If you just draw for fun, then you really don't need to worry about any of this. Just draw when you feel like it. But maybe you want to draw for a living or you draw to tell a story like me then you need to have goals that will fuel that purpose. Creative goals often come in the form of project or practice. Many want to get good at art and will set that as a yearly goal, but as I've said before, that isn't a goal. In order to turn it into a goal, you have to break it down into completable actions over smaller periods of time, such as studying an hour a day or going to figure drawing once a week. A goal like this will create a habit, and even if you miss a few sessions, it can still serve to better your productivity as well as your artistic ability. It's a goal about consistency, and the more you do it, the better off you'll be. If your goal comes in the form of a project, then what's important is having a deadline. This is a goal with an end and with parameters to be met. But when accomplished, you'll have an actual physical thing to show for your efforts. With practice-based goals, you may sometimes have something physical, but with projects, it's guaranteed. Now, when people hear the word project, they get scared. They think of something big like a film or a series, but this is not the case. Sure, a project can be something big like that, but it can also be as small as a single page or illustration. A lot of preparation and effort can go into a simple illustration, and when it's done, a lot can be done with it. You can share it with others, sell it, create a collection over time, maybe you want to make a series of illustrations throughout the year, once a week maybe, once a month. It's something to work on and easier to get into rather than starting each day with only the idea of drawing. Maybe your goal is to be seen by others. Grow on social media. While this is a hard goal to set and can be very unpredictable, it will still revolve around you constantly making new content to share. Goals motivate action, and action creates productivity. Or something wise like that. Tip number two. Create a schedule. A schedule creates a series of productive periods and eventually creates habits. Another productivity killer is saving something to do later or eventually. Even saying I'll do it today can lead to I'll do it tomorrow and so on. It's a habit to push things off and one that is tough to break but simple to replace. With a schedule, 
You have a set time to do a thing, often leaving no time to wonder what you should be doing. When you're scheduled to go to class or to go to work, you don't just sit on the couch wondering what you need to do. You more often than not get ready ahead of time so that you're ready to do what you need to do. Treat your craft the same way, especially if you want to make a living out of it. Pick a time to wake up and a time to sleep so that you can wake up on time. Leave times throughout the day for rest, to eat, and prepare for whatever is next. Maybe you wake up and work out, maybe you make breakfast, or maybe you just jump right into an hour of figure studies. Your schedule is up to you. Don't forget there are a lot of useful hours within the day. Setting aside two for creative productivity is a lot easier than one might think. At one point, I would wake up and do an hour of figure studies every day, then another hour of a different kind of study, take a break, and then do three hours of a project. Two, if I got exhausted early. It became a habit, and by the time I got to the project, I was flowing with creativity and motivation. The breaks I gave myself gave me ample time to game, eat, and watch anime. Which brings us to tip number three, rest. Please don't overdo it. Not every moment of every day needs to be jam-packed with productivity. You can take days off and have breaks throughout the day. Burnout is not healthy and will not keep you productive. I would often work all day every day, rarely giving myself stress-free moments to relax. The old me would then experience long periods of burnout where I couldn't bring myself to do anything at all. I just play video games all day for months and eventually burn out from that too. Try not to hop from one big project to another. Celebrate and reward yourself when you accomplish a goal, even if it's not as good as you might have wanted it to be. There is only so much you can control. Tip number four, set up the right environment. Have you ever tried drawing in an unfamiliar place and only managed to scribble down a bunch of random shapes that didn't quite turn out as planned? Or maybe, just even stared into your sketchbook, flipping pages and drawing over things you already finished. I may not be a scientist, but there is something to be said about the power of working in a comfortable setting that fuels motivation. First off, make sure your workspace isn't too cluttered or messy. It's okay to have a little bit of randomness, but nothing that prevents you from getting things done. Don't have any stray food wrappers or dirty dishes if you can help it. Be sure to have a comfy chair you can sit in that allows you to get close to your desk or table. Maybe you even like to stand. Decorations can help too. If you're working on a project, you can hang up some of the art you made for it or stuff from past projects to help motivate you and keep you focused. Or if you've been really into a show or genre, you can theme your space around that. I know that when I'm writing, I want to have a writing theme decoration in quotes often fantasy. Even music can help. It can set the mood or isolate you from distractions. Just don't start singing along too much or dancing around the room. And lastly, I think lighting is important. I personally don't like bright artificial lights. I either want sunlight or warm lighting. Bright lights feel too open for me and make it hard for me to focus. And for the final tip, number five, the shortest of them all. Don't play catch up. This is really important when it comes to projects, deadlines, and schedules. They won't always go as planned. You may oversleep, eat too long, or have to deal with random errands and distractions. But just because you missed a task on your list doesn't mean you have to go back and do it. If you do that, then you take the time away from whatever you had to do next, and it creates a ripple effect that ruins the rest of the schedule. Instead, just do whatever is scheduled at the time you are able to work again. Too often do people stress about what they were unable to do and trap themselves in this loop of playing catch up. Don't let that happen. Just move on to the next. Now, if moving on isn't possible, then do whatever has to be done as fast as possible or push your project back a little bit. Don't go Hollywood and push a deadline by a few years because you messed up something doesn't matter how productive you are if you never finish anything.
I hope this video was helpful to at least one of you out there. If not, let us know in the comments what can be done better. And if you know of other ways we can level up our art skills, let us know that as well. And also, while you're down there, I would love it if you would subscribe and hit the bell icon so you can see what we do next. But, until we meet again, I would just like to say, Welcome to Edenwick.